Interesting. So I've just been on Luminar Neo's summer sale website and the first thing we're met with is an animated screen capture of an edit done in Luminar Neo. Now this edit, which is done in just 24 seconds, makes editing look so easy, the results are exceptional. And it got me wondering, how would Luminar actually perform in a real world setting working on a similar photo using those same tools? It kind of reminded me of being a kid where there was a toy advertised and there was an amazing background behind this smiling lad, there's explosions going on and you're like, wow, I just have to have that toy, otherwise my life is not complete. And then you get the toy, there's no amazing background, there's no explosions, it's just the toy. Now it's not to say that the toy isn't awesome, it's just maybe it was misrepresented in the advert. Well, is that what's going on here? Let's look at the truth behind these editing tools so that you can make your mind up if you're looking at Luminar Neo, whether it's right for you or not. And if you decide it is, that link to the summer discount where you can save up to 75%, I'll put that in the description below. But watch the video first because you may be disappointed or pleasantly surprised by some of the results. Let's check it out. So I've got a selection of waterfall photos in front of me and this one looks like a really similar example to work on. I've also got the timer on my phone so that we can check exactly how long these tools are really taking. So the first thing they did was use the generative arrays tool to get rid of people in the scene. So what I'm gonna do is just paint over this couple here and see if we can't get rid of them. I'm gonna start my timer. A few moments later. And there we go, that was 14 seconds and they have been removed. Now there's some other items that I also want to get rid of in the scene. So the best thing to do is actually reset the selection before you start again. So I'm gonna get rid of this stick, the duck. So all you need to do is just paint over those things and if there's a reflection or shadow, it's also good to get rid of those as well. So paint over what you don't want, hit erase, and I'll restart the timer. 2,000 years later. And there we go, that was 10 seconds to get rid of those. I'm gonna make a slightly bigger brush this time and get rid of this tree. And because I'm getting rid of a larger area here, I'm thinking this may take slightly longer. So let's erase that tree. A few inches later. And the reason that I'm getting rid of that overhanging branch, which was done in seven seconds, is because when I, we do a sky swap, we need a nice clean area of the sky. It'll be easier to drop that sky in. And if we zoom in here to the sky and have a look, it's done a pretty good job there where it got rid of the people, you'd barely know that they were even there, would you? All right, we're gonna click save and that's gonna generate a new version of this photo, a new TIFF for us to work on. And the next thing that they did was to expand the actual canvas. And so I'm really interested to see what the results are gonna be like here. And I'm noticing already, unlike the early version of this tool, we can now actually take that expansion even further. So I'm gonna expand this left and right and the top as well. We click expand. I'm gonna click start on my timer. And I fully expect this one to take a little longer because I'm working on a 45 megapixel file. And so to create pixels to go around that frame, we're probably gonna turn this into a 60, 70 megapixel file by the time this is done. So that additional 25 million pixels that the AI is having to generate, well, it's done it in 26 seconds, but there is a problem. If I zoom in here, you're gonna see exactly what that is. The actual generated pixels, they look very blurry. They don't blend into what was there very well at all. You can see that it's doing a pretty good job if we zoom out of actually matching up a new environment to what was there in the existing photo. However, it's really low resolution. So what's going on here? Well, all AI tools have a resolution limit. So if you're asking new content to be generated, the limit for newly generated pixels on any axis is 1024. And so if you're asking it to fill a larger area, which we are here, it's going to have to stretch those pixels out, thus reducing the quality of the finished image. So before we get too annoyed that we haven't got the result that we saw on the Luminar website, maybe we can cut them some slack because it's very likely that the photo that they were working on for that demonstration was a one-to-one -one photo of what we see on the screen. It's not actually a giant 45 megapixel file like I'm trying to work on here. But in real world, the likelihood is you will be working on bigger photo files. So what do you do? Well, we expand a little bit at a time. We keep close to or within that 1024 pixel limit and then that we know that we'll be getting a one-to-one -one pixel generation so that we will have absolute 
accuracy in what's generated. So we do need to employ a little bit of a workaround, but this isn't unique to Luminar Neo. You also see it in Adobe Photoshop. We see it in Mid Journey. It's just a limitation of where AI is currently, but as it improves, I expect to see things like this not be an issue in the future. The next thing they did in the example was replace the sky. So it's nice and easy to do in Luminar Neo. All we need to do is come to the sky AI, choose a sky, and I'm gonna select one from my own sky library. And as soon as I've clicked that, it's dropped that in, and that is so much quicker than it used to be. And if you wanna make adjustments, you can do. So boosting up the atmospheric haze can just soften that sky off. We can play with the warmth of the sky as well, but I don't need to worry about color balance in this one because I'm using one of my skies from my sky library, which are all perfectly color balanced before you even start. If you want to expand your own sky library, because to be honest, who wants to keep using the same Luminar Neo skies all the time? Because, well, it's pretty obvious that you're using Luminar Neo if you do that. If you're into sky swaps, check out my sky library below, 270 skies. And because I value my YouTube audience, I'll give you guys a limited time discount. So check that out below. But for now, I'm pretty happy with what Luminar has done with this sky replacement. So we can press on from here. The next tool they added was one of my favorites, which is the Enhance AI. This is a fantastic tool for very quickly improving your photo. So if I push this very aggressively to 100, I mean, I think they only went to about sort of 50 in their example, but if we push that up, you can clearly see that the colors improve, the contrast, the brightness levels, everything from before to after. Very, very powerful tool for quickly getting excellent results. Now they also introduced a bit of Sky Enhancer AI, and while this can be a very useful tool if your sky is a bit flat and washed out, personally I've already pre-optimized all of my skies, so we really don't need to add any of that. The next thing they added was a bit of atmosphere, I believe they had haze, not mist Anthony, and they cranked the amount pretty heavily up. So if I push this all the way to 100, we should see the AI generated mask actually creating a bit of a border around this tree. So you can see that it recognizes that the waterfall and the rocks behind here are further away. So we see more of that haze. So it's a very intelligent tool, but you do need to be mindful that the mask isn't always that precise and it's much more easy to see that lack of precision if we push it all the way to 100. Now I really hope that drilling sound isn't coming through too loudly. We're having a new water filter uh, put in at the moment great time for recording a video, Anthony. But because I'm on the clock with this edit, I wanna keep pressing on. So with regards to that Atmosphere AI tool, if you're somebody who just wants to grab a slider and go, I'm done, yes, it can do that. However, for the best results, I suggest you combine these effects with a little bit of masking. So I'm gonna jump into the mask tool here, grab a brush and we can paint the effect in. So we can start painting that effect and reveal it and that way we don't have to come as close to this edge here that wasn't as accurate. And then we'll look at our before and after and say I'm happy with that and let's move on to the last tool which was Relight AI. And this is a really powerful tool. It allows us to darken down the near pixels or brighten them up and the same with the pixels far away as well. And so this is a really great way to dynamically control the lighting in your scene. And in the example shown on the website, I think they darkened down the foreground, which is a nice idea because that leads our viewer's eye into the background. And then they brightened up the background and our eye always goes to the brightest part of a scene. So this was the before and the after, and we could absolutely could leave it there, but I feel like it's just making the sky a little bit too bright as we're brightening up that brightness far. So what I'm gonna do is jump into the masking section and I'm going to select the sky I'm going to click on that and the mask was generated very quickly. And now we can see the effect of Relight AI is only in the sky. We want the opposite of that. And so all we need to do is invert that mask. It's just going to flip it around. And now the Relight AI tool is only affecting the waterfall and the foreground and not the sky before and after. So what do I think about the finished edit quality and the time it took to get there? Well, in terms of the time, it was way quicker than I thought. And I was actually very impressed and surprised by the speed of the generative AI tools. Having used those in the past, maybe a year ago, I haven't really used them since because they were slow, 
and they didn't give particularly great results. In terms of the quality, I found generative arrays to be excellent. It works particularly well when we erase smaller areas at a time, but if you go for large areas all at once, it does suffer from the same pixel limitation problem that I explained before. So if we're replacing a very large pixel area, it's gonna to have to stretch that maximum of 1024 pixels, out to meet what you're asking of it. And so the quality will get degraded in that area. And so if you can erase small areas at time, it works way better. In terms of AI powered tools to quickly develop our photos, Enhance AI is fantastic, always does a really good job and I can't fault it. But I do find the Sky Enhancer just a little too aggressive, particularly in the saturation and contrast. So if you are using that, just use it with a little bit of caution. While it may not be able to edit your photos quite as quickly as that 24 seconds that the website showed, overall it is still an excellent photo editor and might be well worth checking out. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.